Hi there, I've had a lot of people asking recently about note bending. It's a sort of a constant thing, isn't it? Note bending, and what I would say is don't get too caught up in it. You know, really, it's a technique. It's like one of the nuts and bolts of the engine. It doesn't stop the car moving. You know, you really want to be playing music, getting on with it, getting in the groove uh, without note bending. So don't get too caught up with note bending. There are people who play extremely well who do very little note bending. However, having said that, let's have a quick dive into note bending. So note bending is where you increase the range of the harmonica from 20 notes that you have. A 10 hole harmonica has 10 holes in it, doesn't it? <laughs> Approximately 10. And you can get two notes from every hole. So I'm talking, when I say notes, Let's just define that. I'll say notes that you can get on the piano. There are more notes available, but let's just let's just say piano notes or guitar fret notes, whichever. So with two reeds in every hole, a 10 hole harmonica can play 20 notes. I'm talking about diatonic harmonicas here, not chromatic, not tremolo and not orchestral. There's the four types of harmonicas. So you can play if you can get single notes, you can play 20 notes, which is the piano white notes on a C harmonica, except for three. So you can get pretty much all of them. And that's what, it, that's what you get when you get a harmonica out of the box and you learn to play single notes, that's what you can do. Now, if you want to increase the range of notes available to you, then you need to learn to pitch bend, to bend the notes. And there are four types of note bending. This is probably something that is not common in most instruments. I mean, if you take the trumpet, for example, there, you can play all the notes there are as soon as your technique develops. You can play all the notes. There, there's no, doesn't come a point where there's one note that's more difficult than another, unless you're talking about a really high range or a really low range. So in the middle range, all the notes are available. You just press a certain amount of keys down. And the same with a piano, and the same with a flute, and the same with a saxophone, and a violin, and a guitar. All the notes are available. Once you can play one, you can play pretty much all of them, I'd say. But the harmonica is different. The diatonic harmonica is quite different. So we've got four types of note bending available. The first one people talk about is draw bending. And that happens on holes one to seven when you breathe in. One to, one to six, I'm sorry. One to six when you breathe in and you pitch bend downwards so the pitch lowers. Blow bending is when you breathe out when you're blowing and that happens on seven to ten. And you re reduce the pitch as you bend the note. So those are the sort of normal ones. And then you've got the other two, overblow and overdraw, which are just further types of bending. And they weren't really used. I mean, they're still not used very much but they weren't really used. There are recordings of them from the 20s and 30s, but really they came into greater use when Howard Levy came up with the name Overblow. In fact, he didn't come up with the name. He was playing with a group and a sax player said, it sounds like you're overblowing it. So Howard does not claim ownership of overblows because they were already there nor does he claim ownership of the name, which he rather regrets, I think, because it makes people think you have to blow louder and harder, which you don't. It's just a technique thing. So I think I'm going to do a little video on each of those four types of note bending, and we'll dig into it a bit deeper. Would that be of any interest to you? Give me a, give me a comment below. Would that interest you, do you think, to have a look at these different types of note bending? So like I said, there's draw bending, which you'll hear on holes one to six. That's when you breathe in and pitch bend downwards. Blow bending, you breathe out and pitch bend downwards. Seven to 10 breathing out. That's breathing out. Then there's overblow, which is happens on holes one to six again, and it's a blow bend. And it sounds like this. I'll do hole one. 
Two and three, you can do it, but this instrument's not set up for, this is a C harmonica, by the way. This instrument's not set up for those because you can get those bends more easily elsewhere, but they do work on two and three. Uh, four is a useful one. And five. And six is probably the most useful. And if your instrument's set up nicely, you can even bend the overblows going up. <laughs> Shouldn't really do that, perhaps. I don't want to harm the instrument. I think it's a normal bend, so you're not gonna you're not gonna harm it unless you play too loudly. Playing too loudly is what harms reeds. So don't be playing too loudly. And then overdraw is happens on seven to ten. Uh, so let me find hold ten, uh, seven roll. That's the overdraw on seven. Can't find hold ten. There you go. So I don't use those very much, but I know that they're there. So that enables me to play a fully chromatic scale on the C diatonic, which means, I mean, not I don't do it very well, I must admit, but I know it's possible. So, oh, you want to hear it, okay. Actually, that wasn't too bad. I think I played that better than I normally do. So that means that, uh, in theory, I can play any tune in any, in any key, doesn't it? Melodically, not talking about chords, I'm talking about melody. So in theory, I can play all, all 12 scales, major scales, minor scales, any other type of scales, in theory. So if I try a C major, From hole one and that does present a challenge for some people what about if i try a c sharp major or a d flat let me just check that that's the right note so yeah not very easy but it's sort of possible if i practiced it every day you would think it was just like a easy normal scale, which some people do. I'm a little bit too lazy to practice this stuff every day. So that's that's the purpose of these all of these four types of bending. The purpose is to increase the range of notes that are available to you. Plus, because this bending thing is a bit of a design fault, it's part of the characteristics of the harmonica, the diatonic. So, of course, it sounds cool, doesn't it? It sounds like harmonica. So a lot of that was bending. And the harmonica doesn't sound, the diatonic harmonica doesn't sound with its full true character unless you're doing this bending stuff. So the bending is not only to get all the, all the notes, but it's also to... It's just part of the nature of it. It's what we love about harmonica is the fact that you can bend notes. <laughs> um, I guess it depends on your on your attitude. When I came into playing harmonica, I'd come from the trumpet, which is my first instrument. So I was thinking, well, all the notes are there. I should be able to play a tune, right? Any tune, I should be able to play it in any key. And then I, then I found out that I couldn't. And I thought that was a bit odd and a bit annoying. So did I want to then just say, OK, well, I guess I can't play the tune that I want to play. Or then I found out that there's other people who had the same sort of experience. And I think what Howard found out was that he played a lot of instruments at the time. He'd been playing piano since he was very young. He played saxophone for 15 years. I think he played most instruments or could play most instruments. Um, and he hadn't come across an instrument with missing notes before. 
So he set about trying to find them and did find them and then named them and then related it all to the piano keyboard. So it kind of makes a bit more sense for me. If you're thinking, you're, if your approach is more like Little Walter or Sonny Boy Williamson or something like that, absolutely, or Sonny Terry, you know, those guys were not doing overblows or overdraws, absolutely not. And they sound wonderful. So that's what I mean where it's not essential, this stuff. But draw bending is essential. If you want to sound like Little Walter, of course you have to draw bend and blow bend as well. They didn't do that much blow bending, but some. So it just depends what you want to do with it, really. Most of the time I don't use overblows. I hardly ever use overdraw when I'm playing. When I'm practicing, yes, maybe. Or when I'm testing myself, yes. Or when I'm trying to learn more, yes. But in day-to-day -day playing, I'm not very comfortable with overdraw. And with overblows, I'll tend to use it. If I was playing a blues scale, for example, I might play... Now, if I wanted to get the next note up, that minor third, that B flat on a, on a C harp, that might be very appropriate in the blues, so I might well use that. So I think the way I see it, I, say, I tend to just relax and play. When I'm, when I'm actually on stage or playing with people, I tend to just relax, play and do what just do what comes, do what I've learned before and not worry too much about the techniques. The techniques, hopefully, I've already learnt and they're, to some extent, embedded and just run throughout what I do. So um, I will do, if you want, you'll need to comment though. So do you want me to do some little videos on note bending? I'm very happy to, if you want. It's quite interesting for me to, to analyse how it all works. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like something. Okay, see you later. Bye for now.